Before the start of this video, I would just like to say a huge thank you to all my supporters across all platforms. Without your support, videos like the one you're about to watch would never happen. So huge thanks to each and every one of you. Have you ever wondered whether you have the skills, personalities or ability to become an effective game master? Do you have the skills that will allow you as the GM to create and deliver fantastic campaign worlds that the players will enjoy and look forward to adventuring in? Well, in this video, I am going to share with you my top five skills that I think every GM should need to be both successful and effective. My name's Inwills. And welcome to the in crowd. Hello and welcome back to another video in the Gibbering GM series. Now I've been a GM since I was age 14 slash 15 until now the present day and I'm not going to mention how old I actually am. During this time, I have been on a very interesting journey. I've had my share of great campaigns, memorable characters and NPCs and sessions that to this day I remember very fondly. I've also had those awkward players, adventures that have completely crashed and burned big time. And those moments when my well for ideas for adventures has become completely dry and I have suffered from creator's block. Along my journey, I have come to the conclusion that GMs have to have five personal skills that allow them to create and deliver adventures and effective campaigns. Now, before we go any further, I'm not referring to skills such as has knowledge of the rules, but to more personal skills that I think people should concentrate on and nurture as a GM, including myself. And if they can do this, then they will definitely develop into effective GMs for their campaign worlds. But before I launch into those wonderful skills, please remember if you have found this video or any of the videos on my channel supportive, then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing. And while you're down there, why not press the bell button so you receive a notification when I release a new video. And do stay tuned right to the end of this video when I will be sharing a bonus skill that I find to be super helpful as the GM. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get on with it. What are my top five personal skills? So first up, passion and motivation. So being a GM, we actually spend a lot of time in our own imagination and with our own creative thoughts. At the end of any session, session that I've GM'd, I usually have a number of ideas, actions or rules that I need to look up and develop, as well as starting to write the next stage in the scenario. It's not easy to maintain um, all these things and keep active in the campaign. And that is why I think you have to have that drive, that passion and that motivation for it. You need to always stay in touch with your campaign and the characters and the NPCs within it. I often find new ideas come to me for my campaign world when I'm walking into work or frequently I've woken up in the middle of the night and have to scramble for my iPad in order to jot down an idea that suddenly arrived in my imagination before I fall back off to sleep. And I must say, if I don't, it is lost forever. So, 
being a GM, you have to really enjoy it, but you have to be self-motivated. You have to have that drive to continue to engage and not get bored with your campaign world. And as long as you have that passion and that motivation, the campaign and the adventures will continue to um, progress and diversify. There are times that we might be lacking a bit of motivation or passion. And that's when a really good group of players is so important to us as GM because they understand that sometimes we need a break and agree that we'll have a one week when we're not playing to allow us GMs to refuel our creative juices. So skill number two, be organized. When I first started my journey to become an, eff an effective GM, back when we were playing Advanced Dungeons and Dragons first edition, I had numerous folders holding large numbers of sheets of paper with dungeons on, NPCs and ideas, all threaded through all these folders, catalogued by index cards and a contents page. I actually did have one A4 ring binder full of a multi-level dungeon that I had created, including maps, room contents, trap information, and even a brand new species of monster. Nowadays, I actually use World Anvil to organise everything. And you can see my review of World um, Anvil. And I'll put it in a card somewhere up there. But no matter how or what you use to organise your campaign, you need to sh ensure that it is organised. You need to have everything at your fingertips at a moment's notice. I'm not suggesting that you need to know or remember everything. What I'm saying is that you need to know where you can find it out. There are numbers of times when players mention to me someone or something that they remember and I suddenly need to think, where is that NPC? What were their motives? What was their plot lines? And so, you know, quickly I can go through World Anvil or however I organise my campaign and find that information. For example, the NPCs might want to know who was that person, that lord in charge of the wetlands to the north of Lindo. Well, being organised pretty soon, if not straight away, I will be able to get that name and share it back to the players. So, as well as being organised and being able to locate the rules, I think organisation really supports the narrative and the flow of your sessions and actually supports you in creating less stressful um, adventures in the creation stage. I'm happy to share with you how I use Will and Anvil if this would be supportive to you. So if it would be, then please do pop it in the comments below. And thirdly, adaptability and flexibility. Now, don't think we're going down the yoga route here. That's not where I'm going at all. I have been trying to make a, a gibbering GM video for some time now called Whose World Is It Anyway? There was a time that I actually thought that the players should be honoured to play my campaign. I know, I know, very egocentric and filled with my own self-importance. But now I subscribe to a more co-creation method for the campaign. I have ideas and my players have ideas and we work together to create the adventure. However, often you as the GM have to be decisive in order to um, maintain the feel or the atmosphere of the campaign and that will require you to make a stand. For me, I try to be as flexible as I possibly can. I'm naturally quite a stubborn person, 
Or should I say that I'm very highly motivated and have personal drive? Well, one or the other. I often have to bend like a blade of grass in the wind when playing sessions or creating a campaign. I always think we as or I as the GM need to reach a compromise a lot of the time in order to, to support both the players and the campaign. I also think that it's important to be flexible with the rule system. I am all about the narrative and the heroic feel of the campaign. I openly admit that sometimes I have been creative or flexible with the rules in order to maintain that feel of the campaign. And I have to say that is totally and utterly fine to do. And finally, probably the most important skill to have is the ability to keep positive, have fun and laugh. I really can't stress this enough. If you're not enjoying it and not laughing throughout every session, then give the job up. Give it to someone else. Not because you're no good at it, but because it's meant to be fun. And as a GM, it's so important for it to be fun for us. Even when everything is going to pot and the players have decided to go off on a completely different tangent or a lucky roll has demolished that demon boss that you had planned and you had created this wonderful final combat to, you know, when everything is going downhill, you still need to be able to stay positive, smile and laugh. I have to admit that I have one of those brains that when things are going wrong or players change direction or mobs are going down quickly, I have one of those brains that bursts into action and starts to think of different ideas, different possible encounters, where the players could go next and what I could use within the campaign. There might be times when conflicts about rules or something that materialise or raise their heads during a campaign or adventure. And I must admit at that point, I just sort of like think, OK, then let's move on from that. We can discuss it later outside the game, but let's just go with this now. And I think that enables us to all continue to be positive and have fun. Of course, for me, GMing Mithras, I do have both the game creators emails at hand so if things are not going right or I'm not sure I can always drop them an email and make sure I have the correct response okay I have to so if by the end of this session your face isn't sore from laughing or you don't have that feeling of wow then maybe you need to find another group of players or a different campaign because it is essential as a GM that you're having fun staying positive and laughing. So those are my top five skills for any budding or current GM. Becoming an effective GM takes time and experience. I have done the role for some time now, but still openly confess that I'm still learning and developing. There are plenty of GMs out there streaming their content on Twitch. So spend some time watching and learning how to develop your role. And remember, there's no such thing as a bad experience. Have a look and decide what you're going to take from that or what you're going to completely leave out. So if you agree with any of the skills that I've mentioned in this video or you have some of your own personal skills that you think are important, then why don't you let me know in the comments below? Oh, and just before you go, that bonus skill that I mentioned at the beginning. Well, this is not applicable to all GMs, but I would recommend the personal skill that it has gives you the ability to delegate. You know, as GMs, we are super busy people. Not only do we have all the campaign worlds and the rules to engage with, but we also have real life commitments. 
Sometimes we have to recognize that we have just too much on. And rather than creating something ourselves or saying we'll do it for the next session, delegate it for to the player. Remember, they are invested in their player and this will allow them to come up with their own ideas that we can discuss later on as well, long as we're flexible about it and that will be included in your campaign. This means that not only do you get some time to do something else, but the players feel valued as well. And that's it. Another gibbering GM video coming to a close. Remember, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. It really does support myself and my channel. So huge thanks. So until next time, I hope all your roles are successful and the bards continue to create songs about your campaign years to come. This is the gibbering GM returning to his campaign. See you all later. Bye.